Welcome back to On Shape Orientation. Today we're going to be talking about our last two constraints, which are the fix and the curvature constraint. So like always, let's get started by selecting a sketch. Let's click our top plane, hold down Shift and S to start that sketch, letter N to normalize our view, and letter P to hide those planes. Follow me up to the top up here. You will see at the end of our constraints list, we have fix and we have curvature. So if we hover over fix, shortcut key for that is going to be Shift and J. Uh, what fix does, it's going to lock a sketch entity onto the sketch plane so it does not move. We'll go into depth on that. And curvature is going to be shift and U, and that creates a curvature continuous transition between sketch splines or conics and surrounding geometry. So typically, it's going to be a straight line and some curves that are attached to each other. So um, we have a sketch started. Um, so let's import some geometry. This is typically when I see fix. Uh, going and getting used more than anything is when I have to import something. But let's start with some just uh, some sketches and stuff first. So if I were to draw a line and make some sort of polygon with nothing that is attached to anything else. I have no constraints other than the fact that if I turn these on, all of those edges are Co uh, coincident to one another. So we went line off a line off a line. So those those all got added. Okay. But if I go to start moving things and I move, we'll delete that horizontal one. If I move this shape around, whatever I do to one thing, it's going to affect the geometry of everything else, right? If I were to tell this that this needs to be a um, fillet, this corner up here, if I round those corners, as I go to do that, sometimes you'll start to see the way the geometry starts to move and it'll affect other things. So then if I start to say that this needs to be uh, horizontal, you'll see it'll start maneuvering and it'll mess up kind of the geometry of the, the overall shape that I had intended to draw originally. So what we wanna do is we wanna fix things into place. The easiest way to make things fixed is when you first draw, and this is what I try to get my students to do, always draw off of that origin point. Let's start by doing some uh, rectangles. I'll do a five by five, and I'll do another one based off the origin that's five by five. Real quick visual example, you will see that the one that's attached to the origin is gonna be solid black because it is fully defined. However, my one on my left is only going to be uh, blue lines because it is not attached to any specific geometry, right? If I go and start adding uh, a fillet on here, let's say we do like a three inch, you'll see that it'll start to change that geometry, right? Where here, if I do it on this side, same thing, it's going to manipulate and it's going to change and it's going to do what I need to. but it could end up affecting things later, where if I had like a circle on here and I told it that it needed to be a certain distance away or whatever, um, sometimes by changing that geometry, it will skew your design and end up with uh, the wrong area or the wrong shape that you're trying to make. So I've had students do this before and they'll watch me draw exactly the same shape. They'll do it and I did mine based off of the origin and they didn't and they'll end up with completely different geometry. So uh, let's delete these real quick. It's usually not a problem when you're drawing stuff from scratch. However, it is a problem when we insert some VXF files. So I know a lot of you guys are using these on plasma tables and on lasers. Uh, and that's what you're using the software for. So you're going to be pulling in some drawings you might have had from your other programs or you found online, maybe you bought from Etsy or uh, some other share file sharing sites. So we're going to insert a uh, DXF file. This is one I made with one of my uh, adults in my my welding class. So let's import that guy in. Uh, and this was just a shelf he made. We made for a uh, like a spice rack type deal. It's just going to be folded over these these dotted lines here. Um, but let's say I was going to add 
um, another fold line right here across where these, these holes are, right? I could add something here and then tell it that that needs to be a construction line. And then I start doing offsets of this, right? I want this to be offset. Uh, we'll go the other way, a quarter inch. And then the other way, a quarter inch. And as I start to do things, I noticed when we started adding the, the rounded corners when we were doing this project the other day, it skewed everything, right? I needed, I needed things to stay in a specific spot. So what I can do is once it imports in, it always imports around however you drew it, but I can click this fix button up here. So if it's imported in, I select everything and now I press fix and it's gonna go all black. That way it doesn't skew as I start to change things. Um, I've had it before too, where I'm like, oh, I wanna draw a circle. We're gonna undo that so it's not fixed. And then, oh, I wanted to add a, add a circle to this from my center point. We'll come up here to my, from my origin, add one here. And I know that needs to be, I'll give it this dimension. That needs to be 15 inches away. Well, now you'll see that what it just did is it scaled up my whole drawing and I didn't want that. I wanted it to stay put. And then I wanted that circle to be 15 inches away. So if I do the fix position of that, add a circle, uh, we'll make it two. Dimension that from here to here. That needs to be 15 inches away. You'll see it's only going to move my circle and it's not going to change the overall scale of my outside drawing that I'm, that I'm trying to do. Um, I've had some people tell me before, easiest way to do it is if you have some geometry and just start dragging it around and wait until something clicks and then it'll start being fixed and that'll help you get things fully defined. Um, that kind of works but just remember that like as you move things around you might end up skewing something else um so if we were to do some sort of drawing like this let's say i needed this to be fixed based off of its position i've already given it some sort of dimension um giving it a dimension all also gives it some uh, geometry to let it stay. So if I said I want this 10 inches up and 10 inches over and I get it gave it a dimension of 13. Now it's black and it's pretty much fixed. I cannot move that around. It's not even letting me do it because I'm trying to select it. It thinks I'm just selecting because it's fixed. Now these other ones can all move around and move wherever I need them to be. But the second I click fix now that circle's center point is locked in place until I give it another dimension of the diameter. And now you'll see this one will be locked into place too because I've locked that in. Now I didn't have the dimension of what it was, but I just said fixed. So you can do it with lines, you can do it with any shape, piece you can draw on this whole thing, you can fix in place. So that's how you use the fix feature. Let's go ahead and delete all this. Um, our next one is going to be the curvature. And again, um, we're going to need some geometry. So let's start with just kind of a line. And off of that line, we're going to start a spline. A spline, remember, just a curve of some sorts. So what curvature does is it's going to allow you, again, let's hover over it, to create continuous curvature transitions between sketch splines or conics and surrounding geometry. So in the grand scheme of what we do and what I do with my students, we're doing plasma cut signs. I don't really need continuous curvature. Um, the way I see this, I've seen like guitars um, used if you're making guitar bodies, if you're doing some airfoils or maybe some boat like canoes or something or something where you need a continuous curve, this is kind of how you would go about doing this. And it's real simple. You pick your curve or your straight line and you pick your curve and you click curvature and you'll see now that it's going to make it into one continuous spline to where now when I manipulate the geometry, I have the straight line will then curve with my curve. 
And that's going to pretty much do it for us here today. Um, that's it for our 2D practice. If you guys take a look up top, we have done everything across the whole toolbar. Um, so I'm thinking after this week, maybe taking a little break or jumping right in, uh, let me know what you guys think. But I want to switch into, let's go ahead and do this, switch into these uh, 2D or 3D, sorry, 3D uh, features. So hit up with extrude, revolve, sweep, and start working our way across the toolbar and drop downs for everything in terms of 3D modeling. Um, if that's something you're interested in, let me know in the comments down below if you would rather me uh, work on some project based things, you know, if you want me to jump into uh, like, this is how you would make this part using on shape. This is how you would make this part using on shape. Um, let me know that as well. So I kind of have some things in the works, but I think this is kind of going to be it for the on shape orientation side of basic sketching. We'll move on to some more advanced concepts next. Um, but if you guys have been with me from the beginning, I was looking the other day, it's been about four months and we've, we've got a lot done. So if you've been with me since the beginning, thanks again. And if you're just finding this, uh, there's a whole lot of videos for practice for you guys to, to understand how this program works. So again, thanks you guys for watching. I'll see you guys later.